I was really curious as to how much she knew musically. I, I am a musician. Um, I don't sample, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's not Memorex. I go on stage and my microphone is on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you know Michael Jackson once said Beyonce takes lessons, she ain't that good? But why would the king of pop downplay one of today's biggest stars? Was it just about dance routines or was there more to it? And what about Prince? Prince offered to teach Beyonce piano, expressing surprise she knew about music. I was really curious as to how much she knew musically. Was this a compliment or a subtle jab? Why would Prince, a self-taught musical genius, question Beyonce's musical knowledge? Could this have something to do with the idea of industry plants? Artists who succeed more because of their looks and connections rather than genuine talent? And what did Prince mean by criticizing modern artists for overusing samples in their music? Um, I don't sample, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's not Memorex. I go on stage and my microphone is on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Was Prince indirectly targeting Beyonce's hit Crazy in Love? How does the issue of sampling and originality play into these disses? Kellis even called out Beyonce for sampling her music without permission. Is this a pattern in Beyonce's career? And speaking of copying, what about the long-standing feud with Janet Jackson? She was supposed to perform at the party, but she missed it because of there was it was storming in New York. And so you're just saying she's irresponsible. Why did Janet Jackson accuse Beyonce of stealing from multiple artists? Charlemagne the God once suggested Beyonce could surpass Michael Jackson. Beyonce, if she's not already, she's absolutely will be on that same level. She will be looked upon in the, in the same regard, if not more, as Michael Jackson was. Was this a fair comparison or did it disrespect MJ's legacy? All these controversies and more are what we're exploring today. Stay tuned as we dive deeper into the hidden tensions between Michael Jackson, Prince, and Beyonce. Let's start with the story involving MC Hammer, Michael Jackson, and Beyonce. According to MC Hammer, Michael Jackson once hailed him as the best dancer in the entire industry. You know you're the greatest dancer ever. No, 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 Hammer. You, you, you're the greatest I've ever seen. I said, like, oh, no, 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 no. Wow. You're the greatest dancer. It ain't even close, man. You're the greatest dancer. He said, Hammer, the stuff you're doing is very complicated. However, when Hammer suggested that someone else might be a better dancer, hinting at a female artist, it was clear he was referring to Beyonce. Michael Jackson reportedly replied, she takes lessons, she ain't that good. I threw out another name of somebody we both love. Mm -hmm. I said, Michael, no, she on our level too. He said, no, no, she isn't. She takes lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson's dance moves were iconic and entirely self-made. Unlike many artists who hire choreographers, MJ crafted his routines himself. His comment about Beyonce taking lessons was a subtle jab, emphasizing that while she might be a great performer, her dances weren't original creations. Now, what cemented Michael's opinion was when, in an interview, Prince mentioned offering to teach Beyonce piano, expressing surprise that she knew about music. I was really curious as to how much she knew musically. I was just trying to show her some chords on the piano and help her to uh, respect the fact that if she learns piano a la Aretha Franklin and Ray Charles and things like that, I mean, it's the sky's the limit as to what she could do. On the surface, this might seem like an innocent comment, but Prince, known for his meticulous choice of words, knew the impact of his statements. Prince's comment wasn't just about Beyonce's knowledge of music, it was about the authenticity of her talent. Prince, a self-taught musical genius who produced, composed, and played all his songs, hinted that Beyonce's success was more about her looks and connections rather than genuine musical talent. This is a sharp contrast to Prince's own journey, where he honed his skills through sheer dedication and hard work. But Prince's subtle critiques didn't end there. In a 1998 interview, he spoke about the overuse of sampling in modern music, a practice he believed undermined originality. I, I am a musician. Um, I don't sample, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's not Memorex. I go on stage and my microphone is on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was another indirect diss towards Beyonce, who, along with Jay-Z, 
is known for heavily sampling other artists' work. One notable example is Beyonce's hit Crazy in Love, which features extensive sampling. While sampling can be a creative tool, Prince saw it as a lack of originality, especially when artists don't properly credit the original creators. This criticism was echoed when Kellis called out Beyonce and Pharrell Williams for sampling her music without permission on the Renaissance album. In several posts uploaded to social media in 2022, Kellis pointed out that Bay's Renaissance song, Energy, contained pieces of her 2003 hit Milkshake and maintained she was never asked for permission. My mind is blown too because the level of disrespect and utter ignorance of all three parties involved is astounding, she wrote. I heard about this the same way everyone else did. Nothing is ever as it seems. Some of the people in this business have no soul or integrity, and they have everyone fooled. The issue of not crediting original artists has been a recurring theme in Beyonce's career. Beyond sampling, Beyonce has faced accusations of taking inspiration from other artists without giving due credit. She has been accused of copying dance moves, outfits, and even music videos. Y'all remember Beyonce's hit song, If I Were a Boy? If I were a boy. Turns out she stole this song. This number one ballad from Beyonce's I Am, Sasha Fierce, was written by BC Jean, who was inspired by the idea after a recent breakup. If I were a boy. After writing the song with producer Toby Gad, she started shopping the song to labels as her lead single. However, once Beyonce's team got a sniff of it, they decided to let Miss Carter record her own version. BC was credited as the songwriter, which was bizarre to her considering she didn't intend for anyone else to sing the song. It's an amazing compliment, but I was like, that's great, but it's going to be on my album, she said in 2011. And it can be on my album too. I just didn't realize how it worked. Sounds like someone was taken for a ride. However, BC later clarified that the internet exaggerated claims that her song was stolen. The story is not as bad as everyone's saying it is, she said. It's pretty much the best breakup ever and the best experience ever and again, it'll be on my album coming out in January. Sounds like she's not telling the full truth, but whatever the case, at least she got a huge check out of the deal. Additionally, Bay also copied her countdown music video from a Belgian dancer. Beyonce's choreography is iconic, but considering how long she's been in the game, it's probably hard for her and her team to constantly think of new and original ideas. That's probably why they lifted inspiration from Belgian choreographer Anne Theresa de Kiersmucker. Fans made side-by-side -side comparison videos to illustrate exactly how much was copied. Beyonce later admitted that the video was meant to be an homage. Clearly, the ballet Rosas Dance Rosas was one of many references for my video countdown, she said in a statement to the New York Times. It was one of the inspirations used to bring the feel and look of the song to life. Anne still wasn't happy about it and expected Bay's team to at least give her a heads up instead of directly stealing her work as an homage. There are protocols and consequences to such actions and I can't imagine Beyonce and her team are not aware of it, she said at the time. As if that's not enough, Bay allegedly stole Baby Boy from a struggling singer-songwriter. Back in 2003, artist Jennifer Armour sent a demo of her song, Got a Little Bit of Love for You, to Beyonce's record label, Columbia Records. A few months later, she heard Baby Boy on the radio and thought the song sounded awfully familiar. She filed a lawsuit, but ultimately lost because she couldn't prove to the judge that Bay physically heard her song first. Beyonce also allegedly stole dance moves for her Formation World Tour. Dancer and choreographer Marlon Oritz called Bay out for stealing dance moves from her troupe show, De La Guarda. She took her grievances to social media where she wrote in a lengthy Instagram post that while inspiration is nice, she and her struggling colleagues would at least like a little credit. Beyonce, you have the nerve to steal exact concepts and choreography from other real creative geniuses. 
You stole from Breaking Surface. You stole the stomping from De La Guarda for Esa Bruta. It's okay to be inspired, but at least make the effort to make it your own. In any case, it seems her reputation for song stealing even persisted through her Destiny's Child days. Producer Terrence T. Rob Robinson filed a $200 million lawsuit against Destiny's Child for stealing his song Glorious, which he produced back in 2000. He showed the song to Bay's father slash manager, Matthew Knowles, expecting the song to kickstart his career. Matthew disappeared with the song and months later, Survivor was born without Terrence's name or credit. I know right now I would be one of the biggest, most sought after producers, he said at a news conference about the alleged theft. It's unclear what became of the suit, so it was probably settled out of court. Additionally, it seems Beyonce also lied about writing Crazy in Love. Crazy in Love is easily one of the best pop tracks of the 2000s. And according to Beyonce, the song was the product of a genius collaboration between herself and producer Rich Harrison. The song came from me actually looking crazy one day in the studio, Beyonce said at the time. I said, I'm looking crazy right now. And Rich Harrison, the producer was like, that's the song. But that's not how Rich tells the story. According to him, after he played a sample of the track for Beyonce, she then told him, I love the idea. Now write the song, I'll be back in two hours. Although he was hung over, he managed to write the full song and play all the instruments before Bay got back. The only thing she wrote was the bridge, which is hardly the same as writing the whole song. Now let's talk about Irreplaceable. Uh, I wrote all the lyrics. She helped put some of the, she helped put a lot of the melodies and harmonies together. Oh, but damn. lyrically you damn, you know? Yeah. I wrote this for all of the women out there. Back in 2008, she came under fire when she told an audience at a concert that she wrote Irreplaceable for fellow women. Except she didn't write it. Neo did. I honestly wrote that song for myself, he said in 2011. However, a man singing it comes across a little bit misogynistic, a little bit mean. Although Bay didn't write it, Neo said he had no problem letting her take songwriting credit because she put her own spin on it. Moving on, we have the Stevie Nicks sample in Bootylicious. That famous guitar riff from Stevie Nicks' Edge of 17 was sampled heavily in this track, and according to Beyonce, it was her idea to use it. It was 2000 and we were on our way to Japan, she said in her I Am Yours DVD, and I came across this Stevie Nicks song. Something about this guitar riff reminded me of a voluptuous woman, and I said, I am gonna write a song to celebrate a woman's curves. Except using the sample wasn't her idea, it was producer Rob Fusari's and he wasn't happy about Bay running around town taking credit. When he saw her on Barbara Walters lying about her involvement on the track again, he had enough. I called Matthew, which was a big mistake, he told Billboard. I called Matthew and said, Matthew, like, why? He explained to me in a nice way, he said, people don't want to hear about Rob Fusari, producer from Livingston, New Jersey. No offense, but... That's not what sells records. What sells records is people believing that the artist is everything. The scary thing about that exchange, Matthew was right. In 2018, Azalea Banks made claims that Bay tries to steal from talented women. Banks made the accusations in a couple of Instagram stories in which she criticized Mrs. Carter for lacking originality. The controversial rapper claimed Bay used stolen choreography that was originally featured in her Count Contessa music video. The post came after Jay-Z and Beyonce finished their two-night on the run to tour stint at MetLife Stadium. I realized that my ex-dancer Ashanti choreographed for Beyonce and stole the original choreography Jip Jack made for Count Contessa, Banks wrote, before suggesting Beyonce give her a job. Beyonce needs to get over herself and just hire me. But Banks insists she isn't the only artist who's been ripped off by Bay. She goes on to say that the Lemonade singer has pushed a message of female empowerment, but has always tried to steal from talented women and try to outdo them without success. 
I really hope Beyonce gets real with herself soon and humbles herself enough to accept the visions and full projects women who admire her put together for her. Banks continued, like we don't need any more Beyonce thought moments. I have no clue why she wants to be a regular B. The fantasy rapper made similar accusations back in 2016 when she claimed Beyonce exploited black female artists. She's not an artist, she's a poacher. She takes food out of darker skinned women's mouths and pretends to be inspired, Banks tweeted. She needs to stay under Jay-Z's foot where she belongs and stay out of the creative woman's way. Another person who has undergone through the same thing is songwriter Tiffany Red. I think Beyonce is a brilliant artist. I also think that Beyonce is a hypocrite. Tiffany Red has been speaking out against the music industry, particularly Beyonce, for claiming credit for songs she didn't actually write. Tiffany has a notable track record, having worked with big names like Jennifer Hudson and Fantasia. She's fed up with the artists like Beyonce getting all the glory and money while songwriters like herself struggle to make a living. It's especially irksome that Beyonce, who didn't contribute to the songwriting process, still gets a hefty share of the royalties. Tiffany points out that Beyonce has been able to get away with this because she makes songwriters sign contracts that prevent them from speaking out against her unfair practices. But Tiffany has reached her breaking point and is now raising her voice against it. She emphasizes that Beyonce isn't the only one guilty of this, but she's among the worst offenders. Even when Jay-Z publicly criticized the Grammys for not awarding Beyonce Album of the Year, Tiffany didn't hold back. She basically said, maybe Beyonce will win the Grammy for Album of the Year when she starts paying songwriters and stops taking publishing from them. I hear it's around 15 to 30%. By the way, Grammys don't pay the bills, pay songwriters, Beyonce, Jay-Z, Parkwood, and Rock Nation. Additionally, in a lengthy video posted online, Red criticized a number of artists for taking songwriting credit where she claims it wasn't deserved. The Grammy-winning songwriter criticized the likes of Zendaya, Tamar Braxton, and Seven Streeter for taking a percentage of publishing on songs they didn't write or produce. Red then took aim at Beyonce for similar practices. The reason I called out Beyonce is because Beyonce is the Michael Jackson of our generation, she said. I talked to somebody yesterday who's the manager of somebody who's a writer and producer on Renaissance. The record is one of y'all faves. The song was written six years before it got to Beyonce. She got 25% of the song. I spoke to another writer who wrote and sang on one of y'all favorite songs. Credit not right, his business all effed up. Beyonce was on tour last year with that record, with that person's vocals. She then added, the reason why people who work for Beyonce don't talk is they're all on NDAs because that's how she works. She silences people so that nobody can speak. She also wrote on X, my hope is that on Act LL, Beyonce will pay songwriters a songwriter fee and master points and not take publishing or songwriting credit on any song she did not write. In any case, Beyonce's copycat ways go beyond music to style. You see, a few months ago, Erica Badu was raising eyebrows with a post that had fans questioning if she was throwing shade at Beyonce for stealing her style, or was she also suggesting that Beyonce keeps stealing from other artists and should be stopped? Okay, what had happened was Erica Badu posted a photo of Beyonce performing at her tour in East Rutherford, New Jersey, and captioned the photo of Bay's outfit, which featured a dramatic top hat. She also posted a picture of herself wearing something similar and captioned her photo, I guess I'm everyone's stylist, favorite chrome mirror hat. So it's clear that Erica has done the most with over the top hats through the years. Whether she's on stage or on a red carpet, she has been known to sport a towering fascinator. But does that mean that when Beyonce wore a similar hat, she was biting her style? Well, a lot of people reacted to Erica's post by saying she was reaching. Plus, Beyonce has been wearing those hats for years, and this time it was probably just metallic to match the Renaissance theme. Some people also pointed out that maybe Erica should be reminded that artists like Beyonce have numerous stylists who put such stuff together, and whenever things are similar or look inspired, it rarely has anything to do with the artist directly. In addition, a lot of people also didn't see a problem 
even if Beyonce actually got her inspiration from Erica. Other people pointed out how mean it was for Erica to be shading Beyonce, yet Bay has been shouting her out for being one of the greats. Now, what y'all don't know is that Erica didn't just do the stories out of the blue. When Beyonce posted a couple of photos on the gram wearing the same hat, Erica commented, I'm flattered. And many people said that the comment had some negative energy attached to it. Then Erica posted the Insta stories and did a whole reel on her page about how the chrome hat is her favorite hat. Initially, it looked like people were just trying to stir something up, but after Erica's several posts, it really looked like she believed that Beyonce was copying her style. And you know, it's also possible that Beyonce actually wore the hat intentionally to copy Erica. Additionally, in 2015, Serbian pop star Yelena Carlosa made headlines around the world when she accused Beyonce of copying her style. Carlosa had previously called out Kim Kardashian for allegedly copying her look. When she came for Beyonce, the pop star posted various side-by-side -side comparison shots of similar outfits they have worn over the years. Carlosa even wrote on her Instagram, it's called originality, you should try it sometime. This lack of acknowledgement is seen as disrespectful by many in the industry. Janet Jackson, for instance, has had a long-standing feud with Beyonce over this issue. Janet Jackson might be America's sweetheart, but when it comes to seemingly calling Beyonce out, she spared no expense. She was supposed to perform at the party, but she missed it because of there was it was storming in New York. And so you're just saying she's irresponsible. Janet's revelations were met with mixed reactions. Tina Knowles, Beyonce's mother, responded to these claims, defending her daughter's creativity. However, the controversy remains. For industry veterans like Michael Jackson and Prince, who prided themselves on originality and authenticity, such actions were likely seen as shortcuts to success. The debate over Beyonce's place in music history took another turn when Charlemagne the God suggested that she could surpass Michael Jackson one day. Beyonce, if she's not already, she's absolutely will be on that same level. She will be looked upon in the, in the same regard, if not more, as Michael Jackson was. This statement was seen as highly disrespectful by many MJ fans who felt that Michael's life and career were cut short, making such comparisons unfair. It's important to consider that MJ's impact during the era of social media would have been even more massive. Chance the Rapper also weighed in on the debate. While speaking to college graduates at Dillard University, he gave a bit of a hot take after saying that the former Destiny's Child member's performance at Coachella was better than any Michael Jordan performance ever. Beyonce's performance was better than any performance Michael Jackson ever did, he said. That woman, better than Mike. Black woman, better than Mike. I said it. I understand that's upsetting to a few people here, probably. We have to erase the fear and stigma behind eclipsing our heroes. He later continued. Beyonce, in real time, in one fell swoop, she eclipsed every Grammy performance, every Super Bowl halftime show, every talent show. Literally, any performance from the beginning of time, in contrast, became outdated and obsolete. This was Coachella. In any case, Michael Jackson and Prince were not just entertainers, but pioneers who pushed the boundaries of music and performance. Their subtle disses towards Beyonce reflect their high standards and the pressures of maintaining artistic integrity in a rapidly evolving industry. At the same time, Beyonce has undoubtedly cemented her place in music history. Despite the criticisms, Beyonce has continued to rise, becoming a powerhouse in the music industry. However, the stories of Michael Jackson and Prince offer a fascinating perspective on the ever-evolving landscape of music and the constant quest for authenticity. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.